Hey guys, Ultra Maximus back with the 10th video in this series. We're getting close to the end, I swear, uh, of my top 10 movies by different genre. Comedy, family, adventure, action, uh, horror, all that kind of good stuff. And this time, we're going to take a look at the top 10 fantasy movies. Once again, just to remind you, this is not the top grossing, not the best special effects, not any Oscar winners or who was in it. It's my top 10 and why they're my top 10. So let's take a look at what my top 10 fantasy films are. All right, so number 10, I've got Troll. I've got the original movie poster here, the little troll kind of peeking around the corner, uh, you know, nudging you to come in with the tagline of Apartment for Rent, Inquire Within. Love this movie. It's so 80s and so cheesy. It's just fantastic. It's basically a family. I think the kid's name is Harry Potter Jr., if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to go back and check that. But the, this family moves in, uh, and this little girl gets basically attacked by a troll and this uh, possessed or something by the troll, and, and uh, he starts going through and changing all the residents in this apartment building into these mythical creatures like fairies and nymphs and uh, other trolls and treants and all kinds of weird goofy things and uh, the kid has to go through and save his sister kind of deal and I gotta kill this troll and it's just fantastic fun it's low budget cheese at its best and it's got to be in the top 10 of the fantasy list Number nine, I've got Mirror Mask. And if you haven't seen this, this is a very good movie. I didn't know anything about this movie until last year. Uh, it's made by the Jim Henson Company. It was written by uh, Neil Gaiman, who did the Sandman series and the Tomes of Magic and all that kind of good stuff for DC Vertigo. And it is a fantastic movie. I got this because I was getting uh, Labyrinth and Dark Crystal in Blu-ray. And they had a deal where they had this in a three-pack. And I'm like, okay, I'll t take a look at it. And it's Neil Gaiman artwork come to life. It's The Wizard of Oz meets Alice in Wonderland meets The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth all kind of combined into one. Where this little girl, she, she her family runs a circus in England. And uh, she she's drawing all these different sketches. She's a sketch artist. And she ends up going into, she switches places in the sketch world with her sketch version. And she goes through this quest to try to find this mirror mask to get out of the sketch world and back into the real world and vice versa. So it's almost like a, a through the looking glass type of story. And it's very well done. The effects are amazing in it. And if you've never seen it and you like these kind of movies, you definitely need to check it out. Mirror Mask. All right, so number eight is The Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Love this flick. Uh, this is probably one of the better fantastical films aside from the Lord of the Rings type of stuff. It's based off classic literature. In fact, the author of this book was uh, friends with J.R.R. Tolkien, the author of Lord of the Rings. And you see a lot of similarity in the, in the two. But this is more where the Lord of the Rings goes more elves and dwarves and that kind of thing. This goes more the uh, magical creatures like talking bears and, uh, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. It's just, it's a little bit different. It's, this one's more magical in the fact of Enchanted Forest and the other one's more Dungeons and Dragons, I guess. I don't know. But this is a great story. A group of kids that goes through this wardrobe and they got to fight this witch, save the lion sort of thing and you know great stuff good stuff in fact one of my favorite scenes is when santa claus shows up and gives them presents the, these weapons to uh b do battle and uh, uh fulfill the type of prophecy thing and it's just a really fun story i've seen the others but this is still my favorite out of all the narnia stuff okay number seven the Princess Bride. Loved this growing up. Great story. 
Um, Fred Savage is in it. Basically, uh, his grandfather sits down and reads him a story of the Princess Bride. And it's about a princess who's going to marry this prince, and she doesn't really want to do it. And then there's this pirate, and she falls in love with him. They go through this whole ordeal. Turns out he's somebody from her past, and you just go through this adventure. So it's kind of a fairy tale adventure. And it's just absolutely good stuff. Classic fairy tale fantasy. Can't go wrong with it. It's inconceivable that you wouldn't like it. Number six, I have King Kong and the Peter Jackson version of King Kong, the latest remake. And the reason that I like this one so much, it's a time piece, period, time period film. And it... Peter Jackson hits it on the mark with it. It's The gorilla looks great. It's not too big, but it's not too small. It's, the, the I mean, it's 1940s. You got the biplanes. It's fantastic. He really, really did the original film justice with this remake. I really do like it. Um, and the actors are superb in it. They do a good job in it. Although I do have to say that the T-Rex, the giant lizards in, on the island are very... The dinosaurs on the island look a lot like monsters and trolls and things from The Lord of the Rings. But I'll forgive you for that because the rest of the film is epic. The, the cinematography on it looks good. The colors look good on it. I just love a good period piece film and that's exactly what this is. Beauty and the Beast... 1940 style. All right, breaking into number five, we have Willow, another film by George Lucas. Um, we've got, in fact, uh, Willow played uh, Look at the Ewok, I believe. Um, Willow, he's kind of a halfling type of character. Uh, you know, they go through, he finds a human baby, and then he just wants to take it back, hooks up with Val Kilmer's uh, character, and he calls him Peck, and you got the brownies, and they go on this venture because of this baby, this evil witch wants the baby, and he kind of goes through, and he's trying to become a big sorcerer, and, you know, he's kind of a joke, almost like the Orko, I guess, of, of the group, and uh, finally at the end, you know, he kind of learns the whole role of uh, becoming the sorcerer type of deal of his village, so great film, great flick, classic 80s fantasy movie. At number four, I'm going to put in The Never-Ending Story. This is a great flick. It reminds me of Jim Henson-type stuff. It's about a boy who goes through and reads this story. He reads this book, and he gets so involved in it. You know, it's about Atreyu with this his friend, this white dog dragon thing, and he's trying to save the princess in this, um, this realm of Fantasia from being destroyed by the big nothing and you know what is it and it kind of goes through and it it actually brings the kid into the story at the end of the movie and it's just fantastic it's based off of a book which is really really good um, it's it just great stuff and who as a child did not sing that theme song let me ask you who didn't do it you all did you know you did that's why it's in the top 10 Number three, we've got The Labyrinth. Great movie. David Bowie, of course, in it. He's this evil uh, sorcerer uh, type guy that steals this young girl's little brother uh, to become the Goblin, Goblin King. I think he was the Goblin King, right? Isn't that what he was? And uh, she has to go into this world, very Alice in Wonderland, through the looking glass. She has to find and save her brother and go through this labyrinth to find him and she encounters all these puppet friends these muppet friends and just great stuff a fun uh scary uh thrilling adventure of a movie brought to you brought to life by the jim henson crew and the man himself great great flick number two on the fantasy films has got to be the one and only dark crystal 
another Jim Henson creation. And what I like about this moreover than I do Labyrinth is it's all puppets. It's all Muppets. And it's very dark and dreary. And, uh, you know, you follow the Gelflings and they got to go through and they're trying to stop the bad guys and get to the power of the Dark Crystal before they do. And it's just to totally different than anything we've seen before, you know? It just has its own unique look and feel, and it's a different world, man. Even the tagline on the poster here, another world, another time in the Age of Wonder. It is a masterpiece. Thank you, Jim Henson. They took you way too soon from us. I would have loved to see what else you could have done, but this is definitely one of his masterpieces. And that brings us to number one, Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. J.R.R. Tolkien, one of my favorite authors, I've read this series of books, I don't know how many times, The Hobbit, and I look forward to The Hobbit coming out. But as far as the Lord of the Rings films go, The Fellowship of the Ring is probably my favorite because it really grabs Middle Earth and introduces you to it for the first time. And you feel what it's like to be in the Shire and with the elves and going through these quests and the dwarves and the uh, orcs and goblins and all that kind of good stuff. It's just a fantastic film. I personally think this was the best of all of them. It, it's it's bright, it's dark, it's poetic, it brings the pages to life, the actors are amazing, it's just a wonderful film, and I was so thrilled to see it when it came out to the big screen. Very good, probably Peter Jackson's best work, so looking forward to The Hobbit, and there we have it, guys. What do you think? What fantasy films didn't make uh, the list? What, you know, add, add them on here. Tell me, add a comment. Tell me what your favorite ones are. Make a video, you know, connect it on to here. Um, take a look at some of my other movies, uh, videos coming out. Um, you know, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see, what you like, what you don't like. And thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later.